Throughout history, people have made amazing accomplishments that define themselves. Now, it's our turn to tell those accomplishments, to tell his story, her story, their story, and even your story. With Mike Wexler. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your story. We had such a little bit of a hiatus. That's on my part. My part. I apologize. Um, that was because the holidays were coming up and I wanted to start the new year strong. And I have a very special guest when it comes to the first guest of 2022. Can you believe that actually? 2022? The first guest. Right? Well, it's crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, I have with me someone that I had the pleasure of meeting in person over at VXS, Violence and Suffering Wrestling over in L.A., um, very great professional wrestler when it comes to the singles, but also a tag team wrestler. Uh, he is uh, a former H2O tag team champion, as well as a former IGP champion, H2O Academy graduate, and also known as the Young Prodigy. I'm talking to Marcus Hell Mathers. <laughs> How are you, my friend? Thank you. I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing wonderful. I'm New doing great as great. well. We are starting off the New Year strong. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think mm -hmm. that, like, 2020 or excuse me well yeah even 2020 was just like to me it was like oh was that yesterday no it was like two years Seriously? ago now. oh my <laughs> dude it's crazy to think about like i feel like i'm still writing like 20 when i write the date you know like <laughs> yeah oh, well i mean I, I just remember that it was like so 2020 of course during this time in 2020 everything was like you know uh, just kind of normal and then, like, literally March happens, and then it's just like, boom, mm, here we are. <laughs> plummets. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to start this interview off with um, with a, kind of a question. Maybe it's like a regular podcast question, but, um, you know, how is 2022 treating you thus far? Uh, great. You know, uh, really great for me. Uh, on uh, New Year's Day, January 1st, I wrestled Anthony Green mm -hmm. uh, at H2O in – I have trouble saying this. I won't lie. In Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts. You got it. You got it. <laughs> all right. All right. There we go. New Year's Day. But uh, right. no, I wrestled him in a new location, a new place. That was the day I was supposed to wrestle Alex Shelley. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was sick and couldn't be there. What's all right. I, I can't be that mad at him, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. I got Anthony Green out of this. And I'm still going to be wrestling Alex Shelley. So I kind of got two people on my list, you know, out of a... Uh, out of uh, not wrestling Alex Shelley because I was still will and I got to wrestle Anthony Green and it was amazing. We went mm -hmm. 16 minutes hard. It was it was nuts and I earned his respect that night and that's most important well, to yeah. me. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of awesome when you start the year with someone you were competing against someone like Anthony Green. I mean mm -hmm. Anthony Green being a former you know NXT star, two five live star, and of course huge on the indies and actually made his AEW sure. dark debut not too long ago. So. That has I mean, to be awesome. He wrestled stuff. like Adam Cole like two weeks ago and like the main right. event. And, like it was pretty, it was crazy. Yeah. So uh, speaking about crazy, uh, when it comes to Marcus Mathers, the young prodigy, uh, your wrestling style is very much that word, that much crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. When you look at your in-ring skills and just kind of the way that you approach wrestling, um, can you talk to us about like what kind of inspired your wrestling style? Because I've noticed it's a lot of high flying, but also you're not afraid to go inside the mat a little bit. Yes. Uh, I would say I would put myself more as like a, a hybrid. Like uh, I don't really have a style to me, I guess. You know, I, I can adapt to everything. I can uh, if I'm in there with a guy like, you know, uh, Blake Christian or someone like Dylan McKay, you know, my tag partner, if I face him one on one, obviously I know that type of match it's going to be. You know, we're going to we're going to be in the air. We're going to be doing that high flying stuff. Right. But, uh, you know, like a good friend of mine, like Reed Walker. You know, he's mm -hmm. a ground wrestler, you know, uh, Anthony Green, even like, yeah, I know what type of match that's going to be and mm -hmm. uh, really Matt style. And I enjoy that, too, because I have an amateur wrestling background, so I can do I could do that, too. And then uh, the hardcore. I, I grew up around deathmatch wrestling and I love it. I love the uh, story mm -hmm. behind of it. And, uh, you know, when I this 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 week, I got a, a crazy deathmatch in a tangled web against Akira and Lucky 13. But uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to, I feel like in 
in 2021 and or 2021 2022 and especially within the past five years deathmatch wrestling has became like the next big thing like of mm-hmm. course it's always been kind of history for or history i don't know if that's the proper word for it but um there you know it's been for like decades but like i feel like now deathmatch wrestling has a new name and it's yes. a new normal if that makes sense i feel like a lot of people for years uh actually man alex cologne put it perfect in his promo they just released gcw released today he -hmm. could not have put it better you know for years now people have been shitting on deathmatch wrestling and you know like that shit you know and i've heard you know people say like yeah you're you're doing that shit you know it's like it's like but like i feel like now you know more people have realized like no these rest these guys are still wrestlers they can still go Mm -hmm. you know this this is just a, a different type of style that's all it is uh, like, and then you put some of these deathmatch wrestlers with guys who can't like normal wrestlers, like Sean Henderson. He put freaking two Coach Scorpio and G Raver in the ring last year, and that was right. the most wildest match I've ever seen. They didn't do no hardcore stuff, but mm-hmm. Raver lasted with them the whole time. It was it was crazy, and I highly recommend watching that show. That was great. I watched I wrestled uh, actually Alex Cologne on that show. It was oh, wow. a cr- it was a stacked show, but uh, I feel like now. More than ever, more deathmatch guys are wrestling like regular matches and mm-hmm. still doing the death matches. And people are no, like realizing, like, oh my God, like these guys can go still. And you know, they always can go. It's just because I feel like a lot of people have been putting hate on the deathmatch scene, which sucks because it is a different, it's just a different style. And mm-hmm. if you really can watch it and enjoy it and get, get involved with the story, it's really a great thing. Oh yeah, I mean, when it comes to deathmatch wrestling, I mean, it like you said, uh, it, it's different. It's something that's not everybody's cup of tea, mm-hmm. but it's still getting a great reception. Uh, one of the things that I do want to mention as well is, you know, how did you start in professional wrestling? Because of course, you're a 1995 baby. Of course, us mm-hmm. uh, '90s babies are still alive and <laughs> still have no back aches for some reason. Um, so, how how do you feel about you know, like starting in professional wrestling at a young age? uh it's great you know i've actually uh because of my father he was a profes- professional wrestler so mm-hmm. i've been around it my entire life uh, i'm 18 mm-hmm. years old right now and i would say i've been around wrestling for 18 years <laughs> mm-hmm. i've it's just i've always been around it i've always been involved with it i've always got the you know opportunity to be in locker rooms with my father so i've got to make uh, good connections with people at a young age and keep those connections all the way till you know now and now I'm wrestling those people, and it's actually insane. It's crazy to think about, you know. Someone like I, I had a list that I pretty much filled up and I uh, completed of all mm. the guys I was like friends with for years around the New Jersey uh, scene, like mm. guys like Matt Tremont, Drew yes. Blood, Devin Moore, mm. uh, Jeff Cannonball, all those guys, and Stan Styles, many more. Uh, those guys were like my friends, you know, I did road trips with them before I even started training. So, uh, even then my goal was to wrestle all of those guys. And soon when I started training, soon when I made my debut, that's exactly what I did. My first match mm-hmm. was actually against my own father. <laughs> I oh, wrestled wow. him three times <laughs> yeah. now. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you, you do have a resume when it comes to professional wrestling. Uh, but like, talk to us about that. Like you were in the ring with your father. Uh, you came into the business because of your father, I mean, like, do you feel like that your wrestling career, um, has gone to a point right now? Cause it's still going to be continuing. Uh, do you feel like that right now? Like you feel like, okay, I can still do more or like, man, I did a lot and I'm still getting started. Uh, I definitely feel like so. First, I'll I'll say like I feel like I've I've been in the business forever, <laughs> and it's because <laughs> of my father. Like, like I feel like I am like I've been around, but I have you know I have really been around this business forever. More involved in the business for, for you know two years now, but uh, yeah, it does feel like I've been here forever, and uh, I don't, like even like. I made my debut in 2019 and that feels like it was years ago. <laughs> like, and then like, I just said, I wrestled Alex Cologne, you know, last year in February, even that feels like that was years ago when I won the IWTV briefcase. It feels like it was so long ago, but it really wasn't maybe six, seven months ago. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So definitely like everything feels like it's just, uh, I don't know. Just time, time goes fast. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. I mean, <sighs> for sure. You, you really kind of think about it too. Cause like, like we mentioned earlier in the, in the broadcast, I mean, like 2020 we thought was years ago, but it was barely mm-hmm. two years ago. And exactly. then it goes with, you know, like 2019, 20, uh, I'll even say 2018, 2021, which was barely last year. I mean, time does go fast when you're having it fun. Does. It does. I've been having a great time. <laughs> I'm wrestling every weekend. It's great. So time right by. So how do you feel about, cause I've, I've talked to a couple people about this recently. I talked to uh, Nick Wayne when I got to talk to him over at uh, GCW or excuse me, not GCW, um, VXS. I've talked to, you know, a couple of uh, young up and coming professional wrestlers like Lucas Riley, Char- uh, Charlotte, uh, Starboy Charlie, excuse me. Um, and Great like they're, they're killing it at such a young, like, see, I feel like saying such a young age and I'm barely 22, going to be 23 next <laughs> <laughs> in the 24th. So I'm like, I can't, say these young kids but at the same time i'm like man i'm getting old too (laughs) so like how do you feel about just being a part of this group of uh young professional wrestlers that are killing it getting these five-star matches and you're still barely starting your career uh it's it's really cool you know it's Mm -hmm. it's really cool to see that like uh i don't know i i feel like we all like wrestlers in a whole like uh they just bond you know we all love the same thing so we kind of just we all kind of just like, you know, are just cool with each other, you know, and sometimes not really, but uh deathmatch, I'll say this real fast, deathmatch wrestlers, they have the best relationship, you know, everybody is, because it's so much more like you really have to, you know, protect that other person in there. And like the, the bond, like the deathmatch wrestling bond is insane. And I love to be around that, mm-hmm. you know, because I don't do it as often as they do, but like they, they're doing it every week. But the love they have for each other and the support, it's it's amazing. It's that's the best bond right there, what they have. Mm-hmm. But uh all of us kind of like I guess you could say the young kids, like it is we, we all really like I don't know if it's like sticking together or just like we I feel like we bond quick. We all mm-hmm. have kind of the same background, you know, for like starting as early as we did. And uh and especially if they've been uh, around the business for a little bit. Because I've actually oh, yeah know a couple people who've you know been around the business their whole life so Mm -hmm. with them obviously i bond really fast with them and have great friendships with them you know because we have that same background and we can relate with uh so much stuff Mm -hmm. yeah i mean when you have that bond especially with professional wrestlers or just people that have the same passion as you i feel like that Mm -hmm. it inspires you and ignites that fire to keep going and pursue that passion yeah when you see other people like want it as much as you want it you know like this is everything i want you know this Mm -hmm. is all i want you know the only thing and i feel like when i see people as hungry as you know me and i see people who want it as much as you know i want it like i bond with them quick and i want to be around Mm -hmm. them because those are the people i want to be around you know the people who want it those are the people i want to share the ring with too right oh yeah i mean again when you said that just sharing that same mission Mm -hmm. is just awesome i mean it's just awesome and just to you know continue on to that path uh one of the things i did want to mention too is uh your so you've been traveling basically all over the east coast uh when it comes to uh gcw vxs um but one of the things that you made a few appearances in the california scene over here um what was it like kind of traveling uh, because I know for a couple of wrestlers, it's like, oh, it's kind of a hassle. It's awesome. Like, where do you stand on traveling? So, of course, no one likes the uh, like the part where you have to drive <laughs> for hours <laughs> or getting on the plane and like there's a delay. And like, obviously, nobody likes that part. But I absolutely love traveling. I love going to different places. I feel like I'm wrestling in Jersey all the time. So whenever I get to go to another place, I'm I'm excited. I I love it. Yeah. I love I'm a big like cuz I've always like traveled and had like vacations, other spots and stuff like that. So I've always loved going to different places and trying new foods, looking at things I've never seen before, uh just looking at as silly as it sounds, you know, just looking at buildings and cities and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. just I'm not there every day, you know. Every time I get the chance to go to New York, maybe I'll go there about like three or four times a year. I just love mm-hmm. to do stuff and walk around because you know, I'm always in Jersey. I'm always doing stuff in Jersey. So whenever I get to go to a new spot, I absolutely love it. You know, when I went to mm-hmm. California, we were only there for like two days, but like that second day we weren't wrestling. 
I want to go, go, go. Just like look at stuff and go. <laughs> yeah. And I've been to California a couple of years ago. I actually went to WrestleMania there. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, this time was the first time I was wrestling there. But yeah. Uh, yeah, the second day, I just wanted to go around, look at stuff, and keep going. And, and, and they were kind of like, ah, we're going to be here next week. I'm like, well, I'm not. So I want to keep going <laughs> and look at stuff. So come on. So I was rushing. Oh, yeah. Like, Let's go. <laughs> but I love yeah, going I mean, to I, new places. I feel, I feel like that with uh, traveling, that's the same mentality that I have. Because I've mm -hmm. only been to, I think, one, two other states before. And that's literally myself and my family. We're like, we're going to hit here. We're going to hit there. We're going to go to this place. Like it, it's truly like a make or break kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like you have to like enjoy everything that's there. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, one of the other things that I did want to mention as well is that I didn't mention about the California and the traveling. Uh, what was it like to uh, to compete in uh, the venue over at VXS recently? Over I believe it was November actually, November mm -hmm. December. Um, you had a tag team match with the Wasted Youth alongside with Dylan McKay, uh, facing off the team of Jack Hartwheel and Nick Wayne. I mean, like that building that night. I was in the crowd that night next to the next to the ring, and the energy, the the passion that the fans had, and and, and relatively there was three shows going on that night, so it wasn't like a yes, full, there was full, full pack thing. But even the people that was there uh, felt like. And a whole hammer sign ballroom and just that yes, little arena. So like, exactly. what was that feeling like uh, being in that arena? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like the people there, like there wasn't, you know, a million people there, mm -hmm. but uh, there was definitely, I, I would say maybe a little less than a hundred or above a hundred. I would say around there. I don't mm -hmm. know exactly, but uh, everybody there was so loud and so passionate that it felt like it was jam packed with a thousand people in there. And uh, mm -hmm. I love that. I love it so much. I, I love the, uh, I love the crowd being loud and that's, I need that, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, it was great wrestling there. Uh, my, uh, my friend Stan Styles actually, he told me he was like another wrestler. He was like, man, it's, it's different in California. Like you're going to see it when you get there. And I was like, all right, cool. And then when I was there, I was like, yeah, this like, this is great. This, I feel like it's like a, it's like a New Jersey Mm -hmm. in a different spot you know new jersey fans are crazy passionate oh, yeah. uh, fans and i feel like california is like you know from my only one my one visit of wrestling there is like the same way mm -hmm. you know if they're great oh it was yeah awesome i mean uh it, it's funny that you say that is because uh last year i made it a mission of mine because this was originally a 2020 goal but then of course the pandemic had happened yeah. um to go to as many independent wrestling shows as possible last year in 2021 and that show vxs was so you felt everything you felt mm -hmm. you felt the the cheers you felt the drunk guys in the front row for you sure <laughs> yes um, there you was know, you, you felt the energy in there and that was just a reminder of how much much i love this business so i mean i don't know if you feel the same way or if it's something different oh, for sure yeah it was, it was a great like i've i had i had i heard everything and exactly what you just said i felt everything every every cheer every boo every everything you know like i'm, I'm laying there you know i just took a freaking kick to my jaw i'm laying there <laughs> and i look over and there's you know some drunk guy like come on man get up what are you doing or you know and or i take you know i take a boot and i'm selling you know, walking around through the crowd and they're like, you know, I got somebody like, go back in the ring. And then there's another person like, no, let me take a, <laughs> let me take a picture with you. I'm like, no, no, not now. <laughs> and uh, it was great. You know, it, it was so cool. I felt everything. And that crowd was awesome. I would say it was great experience. Great first time experience for me in California wrestling. And we did talk about uh, the wasted youth. Uh, this is going to sound like another typical podcast question, but I'm sorry, this is not the typical no, podcast. This is, this is your story, but no, this is uh, I do want to ask about the story between you and Dylan McKay. Talk about the the origins of the wasted youth. Where did that come up? Was it your guys' idea? Was it something given by creative? How did you guys come up with the tag team chemistry that you guys have today? Of course. Uh, so there used to be three of us. It was me, Dylan McKay, and a guy named Austin Luke. Mm -hmm. Until he uh, turned his back on us, but whatever. Uh, that's a <laughs> that's a different time, different talk. But uh, basically, uh, we we started uh, when we made our main roster debut at the our main place we wrestle at at H two O. We made our main roster debut there, and we actually uh, called the kids, <laughs> and uh, we 
it was all right. You know, we didn't like the name, but everyone else did. But, you know, obviously, like, who wants to be called the kids, you know? But everyone's like, yeah, that's great. And I'm, we're like, ah. So, you know, we were trying to find a new name. But, uh, mm-hmm. and then later on, we found Wasted Youth. And we really dug that. But, uh, yeah, me and, uh, me and Dylan have been friends for a, a while now. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I would say I made my debut. And he made his debut a couple months after I did. Mm-hmm. Or actually, no, the same month. I'm sorry. So it was <laughs> it was actually a crazy month because there was actually three debuts. Because we do uh, – there was like these student shows like every other Monday that still happen. Mm-hmm. They go every other Monday. And uh, for a month, it was uh, this kid named Ryan Redfield made his debut. And then I made my debut. And then uh, Dylan McKay made his debut. Mm-hmm. Or it was – it was just – it was really cool. And uh, yeah, every Ever since he came in and started training, because I was training before him, mm-hmm. uh, we bonded quickly. You know, we, oh, wow. we enjoyed a lot of the same things. And uh, me, him, and Austin Luke, we just, we clicked. And uh, even another guy, you know, Sean Henderson, we just, that was like our friend group. We were there for a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we started tagging at, um, what's it called, H2O. We did our mm-hmm. thing there, and then we slowly started going our separate ways. But then uh, I wrestled. Uh, Dill McKay actually wrestled for GCW oh, wow. in a scramble in Indi- Indiana, and then I got to go down to Florida for GCW this, for uh, the collective weekend, and I wrestled mm. DF and then a couple other shows, a BXS show actually down there too. Mm. And uh, when they started up Jersey Championship Wrestling, I feel like it was kind of it was perfect. You know, they put us two together. And that's, I, I think, where me and him really started tagging the most is when uh, after, as we were uh, tagging at JCW every month, that's when, you know, VXS won us and stuff like that. So, yeah, I guess we really, like, me and him made our, created our Wasted Youth tag, like, at JCW. That was probably our, our main place where it really got over and mm-hmm. uh, people really, yeah. I don't know what, <laughs> what I'm saying right now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no worries. Um, no, it's it's awesome to just hear those beginnings because you know you like you mentioned before. I mean, uh, you know, training with someone and just getting to be in the part of their friend group and then just getting to have a better understanding for each other and then becoming that tag. Exactly. Team. I think that's the perfect definition for tag team wrestling. Exactly. It's not somebody who we were kind of just thrown together. I would say mm-hmm. it was. Uh, we already had that bond. We already were mm-hmm. friends and, you know, cl- cl- super close friends, actually. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was just, like, perfect. You know, we already – we knew each other. We had that chemistry there. We already had tag moves. Like, we – yeah, like we, I just said, you know, training together every week. Like, mm-hmm. we had that already. We already were close. We weren't two wrestlers from two different places thrown together. Mm-hmm. We were two wrestlers who graduated from the same spot who are already mm-hmm. best friends, you know. So we had that chemistry and we had that bond. So I, I, it was just perfect, you know? Yeah. I mean, when you tag with your best friend is different than someone that you just tag with. You're like, Oh, "Oh, I'm I'm tagging with ASF. Okay. That's, that's different. Mm -hmm. It's (laughs) cool. It's awesome. He's, he's great, but it's like, I I don't know. You know, (laughs) Uh, one of the things I do like to mention on the podcast, I don't know if it's just me, uh, cause I always, I always say this in interviews and some of them are like, huh? And then some of them are like, no, you're not the only one. Uh, theme songs. I'm always, I'm a huge theme song guy. When you guys Same. did that VXS, um, and you had that theme song, I can't remember what the name of it was. It was face but down, was, but okay. <laughs> it was, uh, it was impressive to me and it w- really stood out to what the wasted youth name was. Uh, I do want to, I will talk about that later, but the one I do want to talk about is your promo for VXS when you guys went from, uh, to, we're coming to LA. Yes. Um, and that was brass monkey, uh, by, uh, the beastie boys. So, mm-hmm. um, can you talk to us about like uh, how important music is for your wrestling career? Because I feel like that's really important for a lot of professional wrestlers nowadays. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if everybody you know realizes it as much, but music is very, really, really, really important. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my my own personal single, you know, wrestling theme. Uh, soon it plays. You know, not you know not to like put myself over or sound like weird, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> 
I don't like doing that. But soon it starts playing. Everybody stands up. Everybody starts clapping. Uh, soon I walk out the curtain. Crowd goes nuts. Everyone starts screaming my name. But everybody knows my song, you know. Mm-hmm. And literally, soon when it starts, everyone's going clapping, 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 clapping. And it's awesome. It's so cool. You know, mm-hmm. and that's what you want. People are already reacting, you know, and they know my song before I even come out of the curtain. You know, mm-hmm. like people are getting pumped up already. That's good. You know, that's what you want. Music is so important. And uh, even like, just put, like, look at like many GCW guys, you know, like freaking mm-hmm. Jordan Oliver. Everyone knows that theme when it hits. Effie's theme. Everybody, yes. you know, stands up. AJ Gray, all of them, you know. And music is very important. But uh, for that specific video, uh, well, mm-hmm. for our song Face Down, you know, we were, I, I was sending him songs and I was like, what's what's a good song? And then like, we both like that, you know, those emo like rock songs from like 2000s and stuff. So I was uh, starting looking through them and I seen that song and I sent it to him and I sent it to one of our good friends, actually Jimmy Lloyd. And mm-hmm. Jimmy was like, yes, this is good. And then Dylan was like, yeah, I love this song. And I was like, all right, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and I sent it to the promoter and he's like, I love it. <laughs> so Everybody was on board and it was great. But uh, that promo, uh, we all, I wanted, you know, me and the promoter really wanted to do something to, uh, I guess, announce we were coming to L- LA because it was our first time. So I guess we wanted to make it special because it was special to us. Mm-hmm. And uh, we wanted everyone else to like realize how special it was that we were, we were coming to LA. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, it was kind of like funny, you know, we're at 7 Eleven uh, at the end, you know, camera zooms in my face and I'm like, we are coming to LA. <laughs> you know, it was, but like, you know, everyone watched it. Everyone got it. Like, all right, cool. You know, Marcus and Dylan are coming to LA, making our debuts in LA. That's sick. You know, it was special to us, and we wanted everyone else to realize how special it was. Uh, so we filmed it at a Seven Eleven in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey, <laughs> and then uh, he put that the promoter, uh, our good friend Isaac, he put that song in there. And soon when I started, when, soon he sent it to me and that song was going, I was like, this is perfect. This is right. literally a perfect song. For this. And I was actually thinking, I'm like, do we use this song? Is this our theme song? And I was like, nah. I was like, I don't know. And then right. me and Dylan found Face Down. But uh, yeah, music is very, very important in wrestling. Absolutely. I mean, it's your first impression of someone. Like, mm-hmm, if someone for sure. playing Pantera Walk, you automatically, who do you think? You think of, mm-hmm. you know, of course, SC, SCG, the second mm-hmm. year crew, or you think of Rob Van Dam if you're old yes. school like me. <laughs> so, that, I mean, music is very important. Uh, one of the things that's very important too is, uh, so for me, I don't, this is kind of a question that I always ask my guests. And it's kind of one of those things where um, I kind of see myself in this question as well. Because mm-hmm. family is important to me. Family yes. is so important uh, when it comes to my field as well. So my question with that said is, you know, how important or how much of an influence is, you know, the people around you to you in your wrestling career? Family. That's literally what you just said. It's the most important thing, you know, in and out of wrestling. You know, it's to have that family. It's it's what everyone needs. You know, it's it's so important and it, you know, I don't, it's just it's love <laughs> it's love you know it's great you know you have someone to talk to you have your friends you have you know it's just it's so good that I, I don't know how to explain it you know it's just it's what everybody needs you know and like in wrestling it's so important to have that family you know I have mm-hmm. my wrestling dad I have my wrestling mom and I also have my real dad who is in wrestling so it's like <laughs> But obviously, you know, I would look at my wrestling dad as, you know, like Matt Tremont, you know, someone who I looked up to for years. The guy who owns H2O, who trained me, you know, that's that's my wrestling dad right there. And mm-hmm. I have all my friends, you know. And I guess, you know, I have those wrestling uncles, you know, everything. That whole list I kind of went down uh, earlier about, you know, those guys I was surrounded by, you know, mm-hmm. uh, growing up in the business when I was following my dad around. Uh, they were helping me out for years before I made my debut. You know, they were giving me advice. You know, they would, after the show, they'd be like, yo, Mark, get in the ring, you know, let's roll around. And you know, they would let seven-year-old me just beat them up, you know? Like, they did that for me, you know? And it, it was, I appreciate it so much because it helped me so much. So when mm-hmm. I made my debut, no, when I started training, mm-hmm. not that I was ahead, but I already had so much 
uh, I guess, flowing. Mm. Everything was kind of flowing. It wasn't like, I never like came in and was like, all right, this is how you bump. Uh, I came in and I knew how to bump because right. of the years of getting pulled in the ring after shows and bumping, mm. face bumping, flip bumping, you know? I had that already, you know? And not to, you know, make myself sound like weird or like, not like I was ahead of everybody. I wasn't. I wasn't ahead of everybody. I just, I had that, you know, mm-hmm. from learning from all these guys that I appreciate so much. Learning from all these guys, you know, who take me in the ring. Like, I can't express it enough, you know. It was so cool, you know, to me. I'm like seven, eight years old. I'm like, yeah, let me get in here. <laughs> and then I'd slide in and just beat them, beat them up. And then they showed me, like, all right, look, this is how you bump. This is how you roll. Right. So... You know, those those guys are my family, and you know, I appreciate it so much. And it's, it's all love, you know. It's just, it's great to have. And I, I love that I have that, you know. I'm so thankful for my dad, you know. If, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for him, I I don't know if I'd be where I am right now. You know, I don't, probably yeah. not. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, I mean, it's a beautiful thing because, like, I look at, you know, same thing over here. I mean, I look at my family, and I'm like, wow. Like they're the biggest supporters. They're yes, the ones exactly. that are like, you know, cheering me on to, you know, go on to a different opportunity. So, I mean, mm-hmm. when you have a support system like your family, or even if it's just one person, many people, it's, yes. it, it really changes the way you think. Mm-hmm. It, it really does. And it's, it's great, you know, having those supporters behind you, you know, those uncles, those dads, those uh, brothers mm-hmm. and sisters of, you know, your family, the wrestling family, you know, like. All those guys supported me, and it's so great. And support me for years, you know, when I was young. Now, it's just, it's great to have. And anyone in, in this business, you know, you have somebody who supports them. Even in life, you know, that's, that's family right there. That's, you know, it just doesn't have to be blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, got, yeah. you got someone supporting you in your life, you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's family. You know, that's, that's true right there. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things you did mention about growing up watching wrestling and just growing up around the business, uh, what was your earliest memory of wrestling? Was it WWE? Was it just kind of just watching your dad do his wrestling? Like, what was that earliest memory for you? It probably would be my dad wrestling. Like, you know, I remember watching WWE and I remember like certain things that stuck out to me like that I'll remember forever For uh, from WWE, uh, TNA. TNA, I love TNA. Uh, <laughs> me and my dad actually got to like work for them and do their oh, merch wow. crew for a couple shows. It was great. But I was like, I was like seven, and they let me do it. It was crazy. And then my dad, you know, they just let me sell like programs and stuff. But it still was awesome. Because then after the show, you know, I got to I actually got to have a football catch with Jeff Hardy before. Oh, you know, wow. I would start to see these guys weekly, so they would start remembering who I was, and I was like, yo, mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah. and I'm young, and you know, it, it was great. That time was awesome. But uh, it just man, I I started thinking about that, and I got I got lost. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries, man. Uh, whew. yeah, but yeah, yeah. That that time, like we got to travel with them. That even I would say, mm-hmm. literally what you just said. I didn't notice this. I I never thought of this. That's crazy. Uh, I think that helped me out so much, being there and being backstage too. Like that helped that helped me. You know basically i guess like tv stuff if that makes sense mm-hmm. so that got me a little head like all right well look how they're like working cameras now because of how close i was and look mm-hmm. how they're working the crowd you know i think that that definitely helped me a lot big time and that was definitely those are early memories working with tna uh my dad take me to like delaware oh wow uh, <laughs> maryland like he, he'd kind of wrestle around jersey delaware maryland new york like pa around that so, like, I remember driving up to Delaware, Maryland with him, and that'd be, like, five, five, four hours. I'm in the car, you know, bored as hell. And as a little kid, you think, it, you know, it's, like, ten hours. <laughs> so, you're like, ah, where are we at? Why are we there? You know, where are we at? Right, so, right, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's awesome to have those earliest memories. I mean, like, uh, it, it's when you have just those people, like we mentioned before, just have that great influence around you. I, I think that it's just a beautiful thing to keep going. Mm-hmm. It is. So it's one great. other thing I do want to mention as well is the beautiful, beautiful state of Jersey, of New Jersey. Yes. And how <laughs> much uh, wrestling there is there. There's uh, so much wrestling. That five times. 
Uh, so uh, the question I have for you is that, you know, how do you feel that you are surrounded in a, in a state where, you know, it's filled with wrestling? Like there's so much in such a little state that it kind of makes you think like, wow. <laughs> it, it's insane. And actually uh, it's a good thing and a bad thing, I would say. Uh, good thing is because, you know, it is all in Jersey. There's so much that I'm booked like every week in Jersey and Jersey and Jersey and Jersey. Mm-hmm. But then like that little like bad thing, I would say, because it's not the worst. It's not the end of the world. But, you know, obviously that travel conversation we just had, mm-hmm. I would love to travel and get out there. That's how I'm going to get better, you know. And uh, I guess, you know, filling up my schedule with just Jersey, 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 that kind of eliminates me traveling you know mm-hmm. if that makes sense so that's the one like bad thing about it i would say because at least in some places where there's not a, re- a lot of wrestling like those guys are like forced to travel because mm-hmm. they don't have a lot in those states they got to mm-hmm. go out there they have to go here and go there but at least in jersey man everything is around here everything so like my whole schedule it's like all right jersey bookings all week jersey booking <laughs> So it, it's a really cool thing and a really bad, I would say. But the bad, not so much because I'm still wrestling every week and I'm still having, you know, the time of my life. But of, of course, you know, that's why I guess traveling is so special to me because mm-hmm. I don't get it so much. Right. So when I get to go to California, it's great. And, you know, Florida, uh, I got Texas coming up this year with the collective and all that stuff. I'm so excited for that. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, there's big great. things coming for Marcus Mathers. Uh, okay, this is going to sound like every single mental health podcast ever. Yeah, <laughs> this is something new that I'm trying for the Your Story podcast. Nah. And that is, uh, you know, we saw with the pandemic, we saw with 2020, um, how it affected a lot of people. It affected, you know, myself. It affected, you know, just you know, just everybody. Um, and, you know, and it really affected not only just physically, but also, uh, you know, ultimately mentally too. And even in 2021, there was still that struggle. Um, I got to ask you, um, how has been your mental health since 2020? I mean, has it improved? Have, have you found strategies to, you know, uh, comprehend with it or make it, you know, just escape for it a little bit? Um, have you had anything like that? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll definitely open up a little bit and say like, my head hasn't been in the best state Mm -hmm. as I feel like since the pandemic, I feel like it's going downhill for me and not like, I just feel like I have really bad anxiety and Mm -hmm. I overthink everything and I stress over everything and it's, it really sucks. And like, there was a point where it was really good and now it's sort of going down. Mm -hmm. And I think like my biggest thing like now is like, all right, I think this year I'm going to look into something and try to get help. Uh, I think, you know, everybody, you know, should get help if they really think they need it. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, I didn't think I needed it. But Mm -hmm. for now, it's like, maybe I do because it's only going to get worse. You know, if it keeps coming back and stuff, I'd rather find a way to deal with it and get it, you know, Mm -hmm. help myself because it's, it sucks. Obviously I, I hate sitting here overthinking and I overthink about everything, you know, uh, you know, Philadelphia, it's like, it was just ranked one of like the worst, like worst cities in the U S with all these like shootings and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, I'll get anxiety about just like walking out of my house and I'm like, yo, like I look around and stuff like it's scary, you know, like my head's just like the worst, <laughs> but, uh, definitely, you know, this year I want to, you know, find something, you know, and, uh, I guess natural more. I don't want to like take anything to help myself. But uh, I think yeah, if anyone ever needs help, if you feel like, you know, it's getting worse, uh, definitely go and get it. Cause it's not a bad thing. Right. But uh, for the pandemic, like, cause that's like kind of a life struggle I've had, you know, it's always kind of been there, mm-hmm. but like for the pandemic, it was like sort of like a blessing in disguise for me. You know, I got like, this is where I really like broke out. And mm-hmm. really, like, did the big things in my career. Like, you obviously, uh, you know, you've met me from California and seen me there. But uh, I wrestled, actually, G-Raver in his first match back. Oh, wow. In a huge show uh, mm-hmm. last October. Yes. No, 2020 October. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking last year. But, like, 
I had that. And then I, a couple months later, I wrestled Ricky Shane Page. Just during the, the pandemic, uh, we were, H2O was one of like the only places running. Mm-hmm. And we were safe with everything. You know, we had all the protocols. We, we were doing everything the right way. Nothing bad came out of H2O at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but H2O was one of the only places running at the time. So with not a lot of wrestling, you know, everyone's going to, of course, watch what's, you know, what is on and what is new. So right. we got a lot of attention on us. And IWTV gave us that platform to do that. And that's where mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, learned who I was and out of all that. So sort of, it was uh, really a blessing in disguise for me. And a lot of H2O guys, I would say, we uh, got a lot of our names out there during the pandemic. Yeah. And then as it, you know, slowing down, obviously right now it's not slowing down, <laughs> but <laughs> as it did slow down the past couple months, uh, mm-hmm. I got to travel and go to different places and do new stuff. You know, what's great. Mm-hmm. Of course, now it's getting bad. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if things start, you know, going down and places start canceling. I mean, I just, I was supposed to wrestle Alex Shelley, you know, on the first and that didn't happen. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, now companies are shutting down shows for a little bit just to, you know, give it that time. Mm-hmm. But uh, it sucks, but I wish it all would just blow away. <laughs> we all do. Well, yeah. I mean, I if, if I could make make a comment, and you know, I I deal with the same things. You know, I, I deal with the over anxiety. I mean, mm-hmm. literally, I have anxiety to the point where, like, I think back and like, did I like did I do that the right way? Like, did I yes. Did I do? Like, it's it's it's. I understand where you're coming from, and the way that um, I could say is that you know, and this is not just to you, but this is also to anybody that also feels this way or has the same issues. The, the best is just to, you know, um, I, just try your best to really escape from mm-hmm. from really what's happening on the outside. I mean, for me, like, I don't watch the news. I don't watch really anything. That's, that's the like, worst place. The news you is know, the worst this, place ever. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my best thing is, you know, like, if you love wrestling, for example, watch wrestling. That's that's mm-hmm. what me, you know, that's what escapes, you know, me from reality. Um, and really gets me back to reminding me of what I do and why I love what I do, um, you know, or just, you know, even if you play video games, like, hey, man, I play video games, too. Like, even to this day, even though I'm still waiting on that PS5, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just doing stuff like that, even just talking to people over the phone, in, if you're in person, just, you know, or having conversations like these, you know, exactly. Just, 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 I'm you not know, I'm not worried about anything right now. I'm chill. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, happiness, you know, it, it's funny. Cause like for years I've been kind of like, what is happiness, man? What, like, what is, what is it's stuff like this? It's stuff like getting conversations mm-hmm. going, it's getting to go to wrestling events or just watching them or whatever makes you happy. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what I feel sure. like is most important. For sure. You said that, you said that I've kind of said it better. You said that perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh well marcus i do appreciate uh you taking the time uh coming on over for the your story podcast i do appreciate you being the first guest of 2022 i almost Whoa. said 2021, <laughs> <Let's but go. laughs> 2022. <laughs> uh but no the 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 final question that i have is so on this podcast and again this is a brand new thing so excuse me if this is brand new um and that is you know uh you have 30 seconds to a minute for those who don't know who Marcus Mather is, is uh, tell the people who you are, where they can find you, and if possible, if you, on top of that, are you proud of your story? Okay. Go? Yeah. Go. All right. <laughs> I am the young prodigy, Marcus Mathers, Mr. IWTV, and soon to me, Mr. Independent Wrestling Champion, when I take on Alex Shelley very soon and defeat him for the IWTV Championship. And I can promise all of you, I'm not telling you when I'm cashing in next time. So it will be a surprise. So see you soon, Alex. But you can find me on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, at On Twitter, it's Marcus Mathers one And on Instagram, it's like Marcus underscore Mathers, maybe another underscore. I don't really know. But uh, I'm 18 years old. Uh, I've been wrestling for two years now, soon to be three in July. And uh, my goal this year is to wrestle everyone and wrestle everywhere. And I can't wait to see what this year brings to me. So thank you. 
Of course, man. Well, once again, Marcus Mathers, thank you so much. If you want to follow the podcast, you can follow it on Instagram, on YouTube, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at Mike Wexler, which is my YouTube channel. And you can also find it on Spotify or whatever you listen to your podcast for. Uh, But once again, thank you so much, Marcus. It was was awesome to get a conversation with you, get a discussion going. Uh, Hopefully, we can get one again this year. And hopefully, crossing fingers, if everything goes well, we can get get you back in California. So thank you so much. Hell yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh